do that follow up emails and all that and i still do the door knocking you know i still do the cold calling i still really? do really yeah yeah like for example like i never stop you know i have like 80% of my business is referrals yeah you know 80 85 is is referrals and everything else and through social media but i i don't stop the basics you know the basics continue growing your business What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Road to 10,000, 10,000 Agents, if you guys are wondering. I'm with my guy, Juan Carlos. I'm not even going to try to say his last name. My father. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're with our buddy here, Roop. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? How you guys doing? Thank you, uh, Ricky and Juan, for having me on. It's, it's an honor. Thank you, guys. Yeah, 100%, man. Uh, where are you, where are you located? Here in New York, Westchester, New York. Nice. Nice. Yes. Cool, man. Yes, sir. Well, yeah. You know, just tell us a little bit, I guess, man. You, I mean, I just found out you're one of the top Remax agents in the world. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> goes in the world. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, tell us a little um, bit about what you do, man. How long you've been selling and kind of what you're into. Uh, so I've been in the business for seven years now. Um, I started seven years ago at funny story. I tell the story all the time. Um, I went to college to become a doctor, you know, the typical Indian story, my background, I am Indian, uh, you know, follow your culture, follow your values. And I kind of took the opposite road. Um, but I'm glad I did because it was a very successful road, even though it has its bumps like every other road. Right. I'm um, so, you know, been in business for seven years. I'm an investor as well. I flip homes. I develop houses. I work with a lot of investors myself and yeah, man. So seven years and this is where I'm at, you know, and the first quarter so far, 2021, you know, I already closed about 15 to $20 million, you know, on the road to do about a hundred million. Um, practically, you know, I have a team as well. You know, I have not really a team, but I have like another agent that works with me, a buyer's agent slash listing agent. And then I have a transaction coordinator and an assistant. Roop, you're, so, you're yeah. pretty young for the uh, for the people listening on the podcast. You can't see them. Roop, how old are you? I'm 28 years old. I started when I was 20, 20 21, around that age, uh, right, right, right in college. And then when I, when I graduated, that's when I decided, hey, what the hell am I doing? I am not going to become a doctor, you know, biochem degree. Now I got a real estate degree by just learning on the go. Yeah, man. So, we, we share that in common. I have a bio degree as well, and I'm putting it to good use selling real estate, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What kind of properties do you sell up there? What's your niche? Uh, so when I started, the niche that I had was it was more single family and multifamily houses out in the Bronx um, and Westchester County. The average price point at that point at that time was 300 to 500. Now we're in 2021. Prices have increased, as you know, market is absolutely crazy. You know, now the price point that I'm working at is starting around like 600 and more a single family house, but I've now dominated the luxury market. So I've, I've hit the luxury market really hard in Westchester County. I told myself in 2021, I want to sell nothing but million dollar homes. And that's what I've been doing so far. So, you know, knock on wood has been going well. You know, volume is the game, right? That's what I always say. Yeah. 100%. Now, Rube, what, what, we're in a business where it's predominantly dominated by older agents, right? You go into your neighborhood and you have some agents that have been selling there for 20, 25 years. How are you competing with these agents who own so much of the market share and have been there for ages? So that's a good question. Like, you know, a lot of people do ask me that, like, you know, especially in the luxury market, you know, you have people that have been living in these neighborhoods, like they're the wives are like home state, like stay home moms, you know, but they're their husbands are builders or they're in like in the hedge fund world, especially here in Westchester. Um, the way I've been dominating that market is by like social media, man. I've been I've been hitting the social media very, very hard. People in my neighborhood, like people in the area in Westchester County, um, now that the generations have changed, there's a lot become a younger dominance, you know, they have found me there. You know, it's so like it's funny, like I'm gonna tell you guys a story. 1090 Mamaronek Avenue that I just sold in White Plains, New York for a million three fifty. The way they found me. Um, was because of their daughter and their daughter found me through Instagram, you know, and their daughter said, listen, this is the guy you need to list your house with. And I went out with three other agents. You know, I went with Julia B. Sotheby's from a, like, she was a top agent in, in, in their office doing nothing but luxury, a compass agent. And then a Hula Hans Lawrence agent that's out here. Um, that's really top in the luxury market. But they went with me because I'm a lot younger. I dominate the social media market and the way I just, I guess, market these homes is not your typical just throw on the MLS, you know, or do like your post the postcards, like, I know there's a just lister just sold in the neighborhood. So they really, really liked that. And I got the house sold in a day. So, which was awesome. 
What's your favorite platform? Um, Instagram. Instagram. Instagram, Instagram for the younger people. Um, and then for fa- like the younger crowd, I would mean by like 18 to like 28. And it's funny though, when I say Ricky, 18 Ricky years you just old, made the cutoff, man. <laughs> there you go, man. I'm still in the game, bro. <laughs> yeah. The reason I say that and people they people laugh at me why you target like the 18 year olds is because they have a huge um decision making when it comes down to with their parents. You know, they kind of like talk to them and tell them like, listen, like stop taking like these senior citizens and trying to get the, your home sold when you want the most money. You got to hire someone young, and this is the person to go for. And then Facebook is more for like the 30 and up you know, and I dominate the Facebook world as well. LinkedIn, um, I use LinkedIn, but more for like just networking. Um, I don't really try to sell myself on LinkedIn. And I've, I've, you know, I tried TikTok, man. I don't know, like I'm verified on TikTok and all that. I just don't use it. I just, I don't know. I just can't get into it. I, can't, I don't, don't think like I can do the whole dancing thing. I don't think I can do the whole dancing thing. Shout out to John Lahara though. <laughs> He's crushing killing it on it. there. Yeah. Killing it, killing it, killing it. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Yeah, like all the different platforms. So yeah, I mean, I'm on every platform. I'm with TikTok. I just kind of like repurpose other content and just kind of dump it there. I did get kind of like focused on it for a second, and I had some videos, you know, do some cool things, and I got up to you know almost a hundred thousand followers and stuff. But like, yeah, like I guess it's more creativity on that end. Right? Yeah, you and have like- to like use the app and like get really into and spend a lot of time on it. That's the thing. You got to spend a lot of time on that one to really make it work. And I don't really have a lot of time. So, but it's a good place to just dump some content. So I got some guys that are making some really good content for me and, you know, I put it there and, you know, it, it gets some views and I'm kind of like, whatever. It's just another place to do something and kind of try to. Yeah, that's what I did. You know, that's what I did. Like, that's why I have like my own media team. Um, You know, like I have my own videographer, photographer that kind of like follows me around. He's on salary base. And I decided that I need that. I think that's a very big thing. And that's a value that I could bring to my agents that join the team as well, right? Because they struggle with the whole content creating things. You know, I'm good with the ideas, but you need somebody shooting you at all times that can help you and manage that, right? So that's why I have Steve, uh, my guy that works with me. He does all my content creating. We have a whole list every week. I, I use YouTube now. I actually start getting paid from YouTube, which is awesome. Um, I start vlogging on there, talking about real estate, talking about lifestyle and showing showcasing my properties, which is awesome. So it's definitely been a benefit on using YouTube as well. I think YouTube is probably one of like the underrated platforms till this day uh, because not a lot of people try to dominate that, right? And once I got control of it and understood it, and try, you know, create a really quality content, it kind of sold, you know, so I, I'm continuing doing that as well, uh, putting blogs out there every week. Uh, check me out if you haven't, Rup Singh, uh, subscribe and like, that'd be awesome. I think uh, we'll put your, we'll put your YouTube and all your stuff in the, in the description and stuff, but like, uh, like YouTube for me, it makes a lot of sense for like a market like yours, right? Where like, it's a huge market. I'm in Alabama. Okay. By the way, yeah. like nobody's, yeah. nobody's rushing to move to Alabama and stuff. Like the people <laughs> moving, the, pe- the people moving to my market are already in Alabama. They're just moving from one part of the state to the other. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so like, I don't know, like the YouTube thing, I think is great for the bigger cities, right? Cause people are searching. There's a lot of traffic yep. of searching like houses in New York or in West York, yep. or in Manhattan or in LA or Miami. And so you have a lot of traffic. Uh, I, you know, I got a big YouTube channel for my coaching. Um, but I have a little channel for like real estate too. And I tried that. I went that route for a little while. I just couldn't mm-hmm. quite crack the code. Cause there's just not enough traffic of people searching yeah. for properties in my market kind of deal. But what I want to do is kind of understand before Juan takes this whole thing a different direction, like social media, people are always like agents really want to know, like, what, like, how do you crack, how do you hack that? How do you crack the code for like, what exactly, you know, do you do uh, to build your business on a social media platform to where you're actually getting leads, you're actually closing deals, like, are you running ads or, you know, okay, you want to, you're a new agent. You want to, you want to build your business on social media. So you make a post, right. And then what, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, then yeah, what? yeah. So, um, I kind of tell, I, I kind of tell this to a lot of people that enter the business is like, you know, people, people get confused when they, when they think about Instagram, like they say, Hey, I got to keep posting houses or I got to just say for sale, for sale, for sale, for sale. And like, honestly speaking, that becomes very tiring. Right. A lot of people don't even want to see that. What they do want to see 
is you. You know, they want to see like your personal lifestyle. They want to see who you are. You need to mix it up. So I recommend posting three times a week. Um, and if you're posting your, your homes for sale, I recommend doing that. But I honestly would do it just on my story. I wouldn't really focus that on my feed. If you have a business page and it's strictly just say, for example, like the legacy group, which is my team's name on that page alone, I'll just post my listings. But on my personal page, I'll post what I'm doing on a daily basis, what listing appointments I'm going on, how many, how many homes I'm showing. And this is all on my story base, you know? So when you're posting a post, you want to be able to make a description that you could connect with your audience. So I think it's really coming down to who your audience is. So that way they can keep interacting with you um, because they're going to see your success no matter what. Right. So instead of just saying, Hey, for sale, this for sale, that showcase a little bit about yourself, showcase like who your family is, showcase what you like, you know, where you go, showcase the city that you live in. You know, I think that really helps because that shows people like, listen, this guy is not just, you know, a typical realtor. He's not just a salesy person. You know, he's actually a family man. He's actually like, he has a, he has a life, you know? And honestly, that's how I've been connecting a lot because all my, all my clients, every single client out of 34,000 people that follow me on Instagram, um, you know, I would say half of them are my clients and they, and I reach out to all of them. Like when they go on vacation, you know, I call them and I'm like, Hey, I just saw you went to Italy. How was it? Blah, blah, blah. Like, and like, now you're connecting with these people on a personal basis and it, and it's helping you know, and, um, and it's not a just, and now you're going into a conversation. They're like, Oh, you know what Rup? It's funny that you called me. I actually have a lead. That's like, or I have somebody like a friend or family member is looking to sell, you know, or buy, you know? So it just kind of picks up, you pick up leads that way without actually trying to pick them up. Yeah. We um, see more and more where, where agents are just posting, just sold, just sold, just sold on their personal page. And it kind of makes them look like someone's managing their account or, or their robots. So it, it's yeah, good exactly. to get variety in their lifestyle. But what family, I'm saying obviously. is, is like, what I'm saying is, is like, if you have zero followers, you're brand new, you just started your page. If you run stories and you post three times a week and all that stuff, and you're getting like five likes a picture and you know what I'm saying? Like you really know engagement. Like how do you, you're sitting here saying, okay, I'm posting for sales on my story. I'm posting cool things in my post. Now what? You know, like I'm so, just not so yeah, you could definitely kind of activity. You, you could definitely pay for the ads on Instagram and pick like I would use like the marker, like where your area is in a 30 mile radius, or like if there's a if there's a certain niche they are like a market that you want to tap into. So for example, I'll give you an example in Westchester County, Scarsdale, New York, right? I'll put a I'll, I'll drop a pin there and I'll say I just want to market it to that radius, you know? Mm, mm. So that that way people continue to see it and a lot of people get like befuddled like they like they get scared like oh I got to spend so much money for them to see and honestly you don't. You could spend $10 a day or $15 a day, you know, until you start seeing more traction, you see you start seeing more leads and you could spend more and more money. You know, so, so when you're spending uh, this money, what's the goal? Like you spend the money, they see the post. Honestly, get your post, you get, get get your face out there. Mm. Get your face out there. I think that's the most important thing. People, my my biggest fear is that I don't want anyone ever contacting me saying, Hey Roop, do you still do you still sell real estate? That's like my biggest fear in the business. When when that happens, I feel like you shouldn't even be in the business anymore. You know, because then you're just not doing what you need to do, and that's selling yourself, right? So um people should always when they see you know, Juan and they see Juan, they could, they should only be connecting Juan to real estate. You know, when they see me, they should only be connecting me to real estate and you yourself as well. Right. Um, my question I was going to say, man, well, I was going to say, Ricky, like you, with you, like, I wanted to ask you, like when I, when I, when I searched you up and everything and Juan told me I'm hopping on this podcast and everything, which is, I, I, first of all, again, thank you so much for having me on. Um, how did you do it? You know, like you were the number one agent. I don't think even at that time, social media was like such a big thing. You know, I, no, I guess see, when I got in the business, but... yeah, when I got in the business, it was 2002. I was 20 and uh, there was no Facebook or anything, nothing. YouTube wasn't even around. Like this was back in the caveman, like dark ages and stuff. And there was barely MLS, literally barely MLS. Um, the guys before me, the the older guys were telling me how they had to like, there was this book that came out every month and that was literally their MLS. They waited on that book and by then half the stuff was sold, but that was how they kind of kept, kept up with what's for sale. But they networked with each other. Like they would tell each other what had they had coming up and all the agents would kind of have this networking group. They would call when they had listings and stuff. 
but um, MLS was like a game changer. Like MLS, what you don't understand is Brazil is 30 years behind us technologically. Like they have, they don't even have county records. They don't even know what sold for what. You know, the agents that sell stuff, they hold that to their chest because they don't, they want to, that information is like gold to know what something sold for and to comp something out. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like South Africa, no MLS. Like you don't realize MLS. I know you talked about how just put on MLS. No, MLS is like the reason why I'm able to sell a hundred properties a year, to be honest with you. If I was in one of these other countries, you know, I could probably do it, but man, would it be tough, right? MLS syndicates to everybody. And so, you know, got to be appreciate where we are, man, to be in America yeah. and to be in the real estate industry where we are. But to answer your question, it, for me, it was all phone calls, direct mail and email. That's all I could do. That's all there was to do, you know. And then because of that and the fact that MySpace came along and basically didn't work, you know, yeah. I kind of ignored Facebook because it was like, OK, here's another MySpace. And then yeah. I kind of I, I ignored it literally for like a decade, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I just continued to make calls and do my direct mail and do my emails. And what I realized was my weekly email that I do, it was, re is really the foundation of everything that I still do with my real estate business. Now I have a business where I built such a brand that in 2017, I quit doing everything, but the weekly email. And I still knock down a hundred deals every year, just passively through uh, repeats and referrals and referrals of referrals. So everybody has their own journey, man, of like how you do it and, you know, um, you know, what strategies work for them and what their strengths and weaknesses are. You just got to do what works for you and do it at a high level, you know, and build that database up. So like you, when you get a lead and everything, what, you know, what do you do to, to continue to grow that brand? Like, do you do anything so outside of social media? Yeah. So, um, social media is just an add on. I go back to the basics. You know, I started with the basics. So I have a, I still use top producer. I know people laugh at me when I use top producer, like what the hell you're using, but I, I haven't changed it. Um, so when I get a lead in, for example, and to keep following up with them, I have like their date of birth, their, their home anniversary, their emails, their phone number, and I keep them in a plan. So <clears throat> for example, if I had like a great conversation with you, and I sold a house to you and we, and we did awesome. I'll put you in a gold plan. And if I did, you know what, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in touch with you every two months. You'll get like a weekly email for me or like a, every other month, like an, an email for me, uh, just about random things like my newsletter and et cetera, telling you about the market. And then if I had it like a, a great relationship with you, but it probably wasn't like, you know, I, I feel like you're the type of guy that doesn't like to be bothered all the time. You know, I have you in a silver plan, right? And that silver plan would stay in touch with you every three to six months, you know, and it would like reach out to you for your birthday, your home anniversary, your kid's birthday and et cetera. And then the, the last plan is a bronze plan. Like I, like we, I sold you a house, you and I still like each other, but I know you're, you're like, you're like the type of person like, listen, I'm don't keep selling me. Like I'm, I got you, you know, type of thing. I reach out to you like every eight months or every seven months, you know, like, or every four months, you know, like depending on the person. So um, I have this, I have all these plans in my, in my CRM and I continue to do that follow up emails and all that. And I still do the door knocking, you know, I still do the cold calling. I still really? do. Yeah. Yeah. Like for example, like I never stopped, you know, I have like 80% of my business is referrals. Yeah. You know, 80, 85 is, is referrals and everything else and through social media. But I, I don't stop the basics, you know, the basics continue growing your business, you know, Who do like you cold call. I cold call my marketplace. So, for example, like, you know, it's funny, like I call I cold call like uh, what I did in the pandemic was I went to the pizzeria, like the local pizzerias mm. and I, I took all their gift cards, you know, and mm. I bought like tons of gift cards. And I went through my entire neighborhood and I dropped off all these gift cards, say, Hey, have dinner on me. Cause nobody was getting out. Everyone was staying home, you know? And in that, in that area, like, for example, I got maybe like 300 to 500 people that responded back within a year saying, thank you so much, you know? And I would cold call back. I would cold, I would cold call them. You know, I still, call, I still cold call my expires, the Fizzbowls, the first for sale by owners, the expire list. Um, and I, I tell my team the same thing. I tell them like, listen, I like door knocking, cold calling, sending your mailers. They always work. You always go back to the basics because 
I always say you don't need to you don't need to keep reinventing the wheel. The wheels are already invented for you. And you listen, know? that 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 was a smart idea because those people will never forget you as the guy who said, "Hey, this guy got me a free pizza. I'm going to call him for anything real estate as opposed to the other yeah. person. What do he do for us? You know, so pretty smart move. Yeah, and I always and I always follow up with them. You know, till this day. You know, like my family, they own Indian restaurants, you know? So like at the end of the day, like I, I, I it's funny because when I reach out to them, Hey, do you guys like Indian food? And I'll say 99% of the say people say yes. You know, I'm like, all right, great. Like dinner on me, you know? And like, they love that, you know? And they, they always call me like, Hey, like I just got a lead in Largemont. That's a $2 million house for me just saying, Hey, go to my family's restaurant or go to my friend's restaurant, you know, and have dinner on me type of thing. So it's just like you have to think outside the box in order for you to in order for you to gain something, you have to give something right. You can't always just ask, ask, ask. You have to give as well. And I and I highly believe in that. So. That's awesome. And guys, let's let's go back to the whole topic with uh, MLSs and, and property exposure, like outside of the U.S. What do you guys think is the future of global MLSs? Do you think that's a, a reality sometime in the future? No time soon. No time soon. I don't yeah. think so. I mean, you'd have to be, my goodness. I mean, because you have to understand the infrastructure you have to have in place. You have to have a code of ethics that people buy into. Then they're going to stand by this code of ethics because it means that when you get a listing, it's mandatory that you put it in MLS. Otherwise, you don't have an MLS. People are, you know what I'm saying? It's not really an MLS. And so you have mm -hmm. to have a code of ethics that everybody lives by in those particular countries. And then you have to have brokerages actually buy into that code of ethics and want to spend the money to be part of this organization that's going to hold this and, and, and run this. I mean, you're talking about some serious, I mean, it's not like, okay, we're just going to do a global website and people can just put their listings on there. It's not the same thing. You know what I mean? Um, there's a code of ethics behind it. And I think that's the part of the puzzle. Cause I was like, I went to Brazil and I re this is when I first realized this. I went there and spoke at R4 in Brazil. And I, and I realized this and I was like, wow, what an opportunity, you know, to build an MLS for them or all kinds of technological things you could do over there. And uh, the more and more I got to thinking about it and talking to agents, I was like, there is, app there. I mean, it would be like a lifelong mission, you know, um, to put that together. That's my thoughts. And, and I if agree. You think about it. We, we don't even have a national MLS. Like everything is so subdivided. So it's like, yeah, yeah it's hard enough to do over here. Imagine over there. Yeah. I think, I, but, but I think, I think maybe in the future, it might not be a global MLS, but I think like the major cities of the world would have a, a, an MLS like they can all sell from like New York, LA, uh, Florida, you know, like I feel like those three big cities, especially in the United States, um, you know, I think, and even, even in like, like say for example, like London or Canada, you know, like I feel like we might have like those type of like MLSs like as one, but I don't see having like a huge global MLS. Like if you want India or China or like Brazil in it, I don't, that's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's too many rules, but I feel like everything else, like the major cities of the world that sell a lot of real estate and they're, we're always talking about it. I feel like one day in the future that will happen. Right. Because right now I do a lot of off market. Right. And there's things like you don't need to necessarily put it on the MLS to sell, you know, but I have I guess I there's like there's like people coming with apps like crazy that you can join. You could throw an off market listing on there. It could be an agent out in L.A. saying, hey, yo, I see you have this crazy listing. I have a buyer for you. I'm going to send them your way and I'll give me a 25 or 30 percent referral fee, you know, so that that's working right now. You know, like there's a thing called pocket listings. You know, I throw some of my stuff on there, you know, just because if I can't throw on the MLS, my, my, my seller's like, listen, I don't want it on the actual MLS, you know, for whatever reason that they may, they might have, but you, it doesn't mean you can't sell it off the market. So when I see things like that, I'm like, oh, maybe this could happen. And uh, like, in, for example, like the three, four major cities of the world or something like that. Um, that those are just my thoughts. But I look at Instagram, Instagram is your world MLS, yeah. you know, like. You know, that's, I look at that. You, 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 know? you build a big enough following and enough agents follow you worldwide. Boom. You got yeah. it right there. It's all exposure. You know, like, look at you. Like, you have a great page, you know, like the Gold Bar Luxury Homes page. It's like crazy. You're selling, what, 200, like $200,000, $500,000 cars even. 
It's not even houses at this point. You know, you're selling yeah. everything luxury. That, that's the beauty of social media. You could basically build your own syndicator or your own platform to expose yeah. anything you want to the world. So that's awesome, man. Listen, Rup, thank you so much for coming on today. What's the best way for people to actually get in contact with you and reach out to you? Uh, follow me on Instagram. I am Rup Singh. Um, and on Facebook at Rup Singh. So anything really might with my name on it, you know, so. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of like the only Roop Singh that's kind of out there on Instagram and stuff. So it's not really hard to find. So, and thank you so much for having me on guys. I really, really appreciate your time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. Enjoy chatting with you for a bit. Let's stay in touch. Yeah, we'll definitely talk guys. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Talk soon. Take care. All right. Bye.